What's up guys, I'm Ivan Calderon and today we're talking about how producers can speed up their workflow. Now I can't tell you how many times when I first started to produce, I would get an idea, but by the time I set up my desk and I opened up the software, loaded the VSTs and routed everything, the inspiration was no longer there. Now I'm sure some of you guys can relate to this story, but in an effort to never to have to deal with that again, I started to work in templates and that is exactly what we're talking about today. Now I know templates are not the sexiest topic in the world, but I promise you, once you implement one that works for you and you use it every day, not only will your productivity increase, but also your output and that's what we want right you want to make more beats you want to make more songs now in this video i'm going to be showing you guys my production template how i set it up and how i use it so let's jump right in now if you guys take a look i actually have a couple templates in my arsenal the first one that you see here is a beat mixing template which is the one that i use to mix my own beats or beats for clients the second one is a production template which we're going to be talking about today this one i use to make my beats then I have a song mixing template, which is the one that I use to mix full records for people. And then I recently created a production mobile template because when I'm out and about and I just have my computer and just like, you know, a, a mini MIDI keyboard, uh, I use different software. So that is why that is. But like I said, today we're going to be focusing on the production template. Now diving into the template itself, the first thing you're going to see is that I have a couple folder tracks with individual sounds and VSTs underneath. Now the first folder you see up top is labeled instruments and that contains three empty MIDI tracks that I use to import my VSTs. Now technically you could go without the empty MIDI tracks because in Studio One, opening up a VST is just as simple as dragging from your browser window over to your session and that is it, but I kind of like the way this looks. Now tracks two and three are always empty in case I want to add more VSTs, which I tend to do, but number one always has a piano. The reason for this is because a piano for me is easier to hear chords and notes in. So when I'm producing, I want an instrument, I want something that can help me lay down an idea quickly. And then because we're working in MIDI later on, if I want to switch this to like a pad or like a different kind of piano, I can do that by swapping out the sounds. So for example, I have a little bit of a recorded thing here with the piano and let's say I record that in. and then I decide that, hey, I really don't want this to be a piano. Well, I can go back to my browse feature and let's say I wanna bring in like a silent. I'm gonna drag it over that and that's gonna, I'm gonna hit replace. That replaces a piano and then let's say maybe I want to, I want it to be a pad. So I'm gonna go over to, I don't know what that sounds like, but. So this process helps me a lot when it comes down to writing melodic content because I'm able to jot something down, lay a foundation with a piano, and then again, because we're using MIDI, I can swap that out for a different sound later on if I need to. Now moving down, the next folder that you guys see is a drums folder and that contains all my drum tracks, which include, you know, kick, snare, clap, open hat, close hat, crash, and then two extra ones at the bottom that I tend to use for like percussive material. Now the VST that I use to make all this work for my drums is machine, and I use that in combination with my machine controller. Now I've said this before, but I actually don't sequence, I don't program, I don't record within the machine software. What I do is I take the sounds from there and I route them to Studio One. So I literally just only use the machine controller for the pads, which I love. So essentially what ends up happening is that I have each pad on my controller routed directly to a track on Studio One. So pad one is kick, pad two is snare, pad three is supposed to be clap, but I have nothing in there now fours, open hat, and so on and so forth. Now, as you just heard, I actually have drum sounds loaded into each pad. And that's not to say that I use these sounds for every beat, but again, it's just kind of like the piano. Sounds that are ready, things that are ready to go in case I want to lay down an idea, because at the end of the day, this is MIDI. If I lay something down and I don't like the sound of the snare or the kick, I can swap those out later, but that pattern stays there no matter what. Now, last but not least, if we take a look at my mixer, you'll see that everything is routed how it's supposed to be. So the piano will come up on channel one. If you go down to the drums and play the kick, it'll show up on channel two, snare, channel three, and so on and so forth. Now this is helpful because it allows me to control every sound individually and kind of gives me the opportunity to create a rough mix as I'm producing. Now that in essence is my production template. And like I said, it's not the sexiest topic in the world, but as, as a producer, a mixer, a creator, whenever we get those bursts of inspiration, we have to capitalize quickly. You don't really want to be slowed down by the technicalities of your software. So having something like this helps you get over that hurdle so you get to creating, which is what matters in the end. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not already, but I will see you guys on the next one.